going on, lads? What's the crack? Welcome back. We've got some new club icons here. You're having a look. We've got Rodri. Can I interest you in that? These are all free players with the nominating contract, as you see here. Lorente, Costa, all of these guys. We're going to be doing a review, training guide. I'm going to be showing some gameplay clips of the players we actually signed. Spoiler alert, Lorente and Rodri. And of course, we're going to be talking about these cards and recommending a few others as well. Let's get straight into it, man. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go. All right, let's get straight into it. That's what she said. Yeah. So, we've got the nominating contracts here. If you press triangular Y on your Xbox pad or triangle on the PS5 pad, you will get the date of validity. So, we've only got one day left in our five star here. So, we are 100% going to be getting a five star. Now, on my road to glory, where I did a stream earlier or yesterday, we did play with Rodri and Lorente. You'll see some clips coming up here of the players. But Rodri is probably the pick of them. We're going to show you why here with some clips in the background. But basically, Rodri's card, lads, is pretty much the ultimate DMF. If you're not bothered about pace and acceleration, I always like to have one holding DMF and one central uh, DMF or else a central center midfielder that's either a box to box or a destroyer. Very, very simple card to use. Very, very, very easy to just sit, set down as a deep line um, anchorman with deep line on him. And then also just be able to kind of leave him as he is. Now, he's also got soul control, one-touch pass, low-lofted way to pass, and true passing. You'll see from the clips here, we will do a full review of Rodri, of course. But this guy just needs blocker. Everything else he has, blocker and heading maybe is probably what you need on him. Absolutely fantastic player. I'm also going to switch it up a bit as well and just show you the builds at the end of the video as well. So just in case you're wondering about the builds, they'll be chaptered towards the end of the video. Moving through the pack then as well with these, we have Stuani here as a center forward. I do not rate him, even though he's down as a four-star nominating contract. I just don't rate him at all, lads. He does have weak foot accuracy at medium and unwavering form. He's fairly okay height-wise and strength-wise, jumping at 80, finishing at 79. But to me, as a super sub even, he's not worth it, man. Honestly, I'm not going to waste time on these cards. If you are playing this game free to play, I just would not waste a four-star even on any of these three boys. Cresswell is the same. You can just buy a uh, four-star uh, or even five-star GP players for about 100k. Alejandro Balde is a very good option to buy left back if you can't get Roberto Carlos or Davies is another left back option. Cancelo, any of those boys. Just a little bit of um, kind of like a weak card, right? Obviously, you do have pinpoint crossing and outside curlers and attack and full back, but just too loose, too open. And I don't feel that even though his lofted pass is good, for a four-star, it's not too bad. I mean, we have got two four-stars here. It's potential. Uh, potentially, we could spin it on that. But, you know, even for Teze as a centre-back, he's not a bad option either, but what kills him is only his 18 levels. Now, the thing I like about this card, and you'll see with the build at the end of this video, you can actually get his speed up into the meta category, but you're not going to have the defence stats up. If he had an extra five levels, this guy would have been absolutely insane. But he doesn't have any blocker, he doesn't have any interception, he doesn't have aerial superiority... Yeah, I mean, man mark and slide and tackle, he doesn't have any of those. So it's okay for a four-star. We would probably test him out and see how he goes. Um, but that kind of ends the four-star discussion, okay? Now on to the five-star. We've already covered Rodri. I think he's definitely the pick of him, apart from one other player. We'll get to that. But McGinn is first up in the five-star box-to-box. Too slow, doesn't have enough going forward. Unwavering form with high weak foot accuracy is fairly okay. He has a load of player skills, but as a defensive full uh, or as a defensive box to box, I think he's lacking in a couple of areas. Most notably, his tackling and his defensive awareness. And going forward with the ball, he's lacking in not only balance, even though he's got really high tight possession. He's lacking in speed and acceleration, which to cover a lot of ground, he is best suited as a defensive box to box. But there's just so many better players in him. And as I said, you can judge by the by the guide at the end. We also have Diogo Costa. Diogo Costa. Diogo. Diogo, yeah, Costa. Costa is a good keeper, lads, but again, if a keeper is under 190 CM, what do we always say? You need to have that reach, and you also need to have the jumping super, super high, and he has got none of these. Even though he's got some good player skills, I do like this card, and he plays way above his stats, and some people will love him. I don't recommend using a five-star nominating contract at him unless you're swimming in him. Honestly, unless you're swimming in him. Now, we have to use our five-star, so that's different. And we'll get another one with the 15 games played in the match pass. That leaves us with Milenkovic or Lorente. And to be honest with you, Milenkovic is not a bad option at all. 19 levels. They're not going to give you superstar, meta, god-tier level players for free uh, with these club icons, okay? This guy's pretty decent. If you forget about the fact that he has lack of uh, speed, 
You don't need speed with an extra frontman. If this guy was a destroyer, it's different. But he is your tall, aerial, defensive powerhouse at the back. He's your Van Dyke, your Varane, your Maldini. Um, I know Maldini is a destroyer, but that's the type of player that you want him to be. You want him to be your last, 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 last line of defense. Very little manual defending with him. Just let the AI position him and switch him when you need to attack the ball. Let the ball come to him. Similar to Rodri, actually. Um, but if you've missed that retraining video, that covers a lot of that stuff. Blocker, interception. He's missing interception, but he has blocker area superiority and heading. Acrobatic clearance, he's missing that as well. So that's a little bit. Listen, lads, with the stage of this game now that the game has been out for so long, if you're a newcomer and you want to invest a bit of time and player skills, that it is a lottery to give new skills to these players, you can do it and you can turn these players into really good players that will get you to Division 2 or Division 1. But if you are coming up against really good strikers, you are going to struggle because they need a bit of investment. They need a bit of work. So that does leave us with my top pick, Lorente. This guy is an absolute demon. He's a monster. He's a beast. Whatever you want to call him. He's unreal. I love him. I think he's one of the best pound-for-pound -pound center midfielders in the game. You can train him both defensively and, and as an attacking CMF. I would probably put him as a defensive CMF strictly because he has got track back, interception, man marking, and fighting spirit. He doesn't have one touch pass, but he has first time shot. Now, if you are playing him as a right back or a right mid, it's a slightly different build. But for the build we're going to focus on, it's going to be him in his best position, which is a box-to-box -box demonic disruptor of everything, right? If you don't have Kante, if you don't have Makalele, if you don't have somebody that can cover serious ground, such as Sadarf or Davids or any of them, I definitely think Lorente is a beast. He can do it all. Kind of reminds me of a taller version of Barella. And you'll see some clips in the background here as well. But we also will focus on a brand new full video of Lorente and Rodri with loads of clips and loads of different training guides. Other than that, I don't think there's anybody else. Teze as my four-star pick is my recommendation. Lorente and Rodri. And even if you don't have a really good keeper, cost is not bad either. Other than that, lads... I will be back quite soon. You're going to see on the screen as well popping up the training guides. Just have a glance over them. It's just a quick, you know, 10 second. You can pause the video and move on every 10 seconds or whatever. They're all chaptered. We'll see them in. But yeah, Lorente is a beast. You'll see from the clips that we've shown you. And also when I'm just telling you about him. If you put a bit of time into him, he can become a monster for you. Other than that, boys, I mean, as we keep saying, these club icons, realistically, these club icons are not going to be in game level. So just bear that in mind when you are signing these. Rodri is a fantastic player, but he's not worlds away from where he's going to be when you actually sign and when you actually get um, a player that's his nominating contract or his GP variant, right? So when we sign Rodri here, we will be getting another two five-star contracts that we can kind of mess around with. Rodri is very, very good. He's one of the best base GP players in the game. If you don't have Reichert, if you don't have Vieira, if you don't have somebody like that that's meta, like in-game level, Rodri's definitely a good pick, but if you have the GP version of him or a similar version of Rodri, he is definitely going to be pretty similar there. So that is it for me, lads. I will leave you with the training guides. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you later. And I will be streaming, of course, every Thursday and Friday. I'll talk to you then.